Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the First World Manila podcast. For those of you just dropping in, First World Manila is a brand that makes understanding economic and urban development in Manila and the Philippines more interesting to a larger audience. Um, so I am Ramon Rodrigo Calo Cuenca, CFA. I am the founder and director of First World Manila. Um, and how we how First World Manila makes these topics more interesting is by creating content that's more accessible to people, whether it be via vlogs on YouTube, fine art exhibits, or even this podcast. So that's how we go about making economic and urban development more interesting to a broader audience in Manila. Okay, so today's episode is going to be about understanding Manila's infrastructure problem. And when I, when I say infrastructure, I think the most obvious uh, problem we face is traffic. I mean, that's, that's the most relatable issue that you and me and everyone else in Manila faces and elsewhere in the Philippines. Uh, traffic is a, a sign of, uh, or the, the amount of traffic that we go through every day is a sign of a uh, broader infrastructure problem. So infrastructure, well, the way I use it is, you know, in, in terms of uh, enough roads and bridges and a subway system, et cetera, uh, to help our, our economy and standard of living. So it's not, a, it's not a secret that infrastructure is an issue in the Philippines. In fact, if any of you watched um, the first First World Manila vlog, uh, when I actually list, when I, when I showed that list of the top problems of doing biz business in the Philippines, uh, number two, right under government efficiency, was infrastructure. So that's been an obvious problem for a long time. And this episode, we wanted, I want to talk about uh, what the current administration is doing to alleviate these problems. Um, obviously, we all feel the infrastructure problem. Just take a car out and drive it around uh, Metro Manila, or even take the train where, uh, re in recent uh, weeks and months, uh, uh, train cars have broken or have not been available. Trains have broken down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, it, it's something that we all face—a problem that we all face. Uh, but beyond the more obvious impacts, uh, impacts that have a negative effect on our our daily lives there's more sort of problems that aren't immediately felt because of infrastructure. Uh, I'm specifically referring to the problem of uh, productivity and uh, to make to make that concept more uh, tangible to to most of my viewers, uh, productivity in, in the terms of just being able to get things done here in, uh, in Metro Manila. Um, so one way to, to measure the impact of infrastructure pro our, our infrastructure problems on productivity is actually to look at a study done in 2014 by uh, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, also known as JICA, and NEDA, the National Econ Economic Development Authority. Uh, traffic congestion costs um, at least 2.4 billion pesos every day in Metro Manila alone. So, in other words, we could have been much richer by 2.4 billion pesos every day in 2014 if our um, traffic and broader infrastructure problems were alleviated. Uh, so, that's a pretty insane number. Um, I, I think according to more recent data, it, it's now approximately 2.8 billion pesos every day. So it's, uh, I mean, that, that includes inflation, but still it's a high number. Okay, so that's, uh, that's obviously a problem. Just being able to get things done and be productive and generate wealth in the city and the country is hampered by uh, traffic and infrastructure problems. Um, if you ever read the news or maybe more of the, more of the uh, denser stuff regarding these issues, uh, some e economists refer to this problem as the middle income trap, where uh, basically things like infrastructure bottlenecks uh, stops um, stops the Philippines from moving up to a higher a higher standard of living and uh, and obviously wealth generated. Um, uh, 
Um, let's see. Okay. Basically, there's no, there, there's, there's not enough structural support to, to really uh, bolster further uh, economic growth that is inclusive. So that would benefit all sectors of society. And you need, you need working uh, roads or or less traffic and you know ways easier modes of transportation for people to just just to get around and get things done. That's obviously you know um, the idea here is that I mean obviously for 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 local businesses just being able to get things done probably helps you generate more revenue ideally and maybe helps your business grow and helps you hire more employees uh, pay them a better salary uh, assuming the economy is doing well uh, also bringing in um, bringing in more foreign investors to set, to set up business here uh, and obviously to bring in their managerial know-how and technology it's obviously an incentive to have better infrastructure to bring in those foreign businesses uh, again to to make uh, economic growth here more inclusive um, i.e. hiring more people and providing them a better quality of life and also <clears throat> um, yeah job opportunities basically uh, it's uh, according to the deputy governor uh, Guni Gundo, I think I think it's how you pronounce it of Banco Central uh, there are we actually have a few things going for our economy so and that's probably why you've seen a bull market in recent years and also why the economy has been growing at a clip of like what six seven percent uh, annually um, I mean there are, uh, there's a favorable de favorable demographic so you have a young a young um, population that's ready to work and buy stuff and so it, things like that is sort of a what they call an economic uh, tailwind meaning that it, it sort of supports the economy and that's why there's a lot of interest in the Philippines right now but what again what's what's stopping us from going even further is the fact that the infrastructure isn't there to really uh, again support our growth or our inclusive economic growth okay uh, so why haven't why hasn't infrastructure been uh, really addressed previously um, the two past administrations focused a lot more on uh, they, I mean, not that they didn't look at infrastructure, but there was a stronger emphasis on fiscal responsibility. Like, for example, they can uh, basically cleaning um, the uh, the Philippines finances so that they can pay uh, foreign debt. That's one thing. Um, so, I mean, there obviously the government, the previous administrations had the reasons for that. I mean, you could interpret that that now that now that our fiscal position meaning our ability to pay off foreign debt for example is better we can actually borrow more to 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 actually fund and finance our infrastructure for example so there's there's that angle but the point is uh, regardless of, of what the reasons are uh, there was more of a there was more of an emphasis on really uh, fixing up our our tax uh, our tax collecting basically our tax collecting um, powers uh, so even spending uh, in previous administrations, even spending on infrastructure as a percentage of GDP wasn't um, wasn't as uh, much of a priority in terms even in terms of the numbers. So I'm going to pull up a link for those of you who are just listening to the audio only version of this podcast. I'm going to pull up a link here. Okay, this graphic here from Business World, it's pretty telling. I mean, uh, as they say, a chart tells a whole story. Or is that the right saying? I can't remember, but something like, like a picture says it tells a thousand world. Uh, sorry, sorry a, a thousand words. Yeah, okay. So looking at this uh, graphic from Business World, it says here, infrastructure, the road ahead. So this is a... Uh, this is a graphic comparing uh, historical infrastructure spending as a percentage of GDP of pre previous administrations and to that of the current administration, of the Duterte administration. So you have a peak, for example, percentage-wise under Marcos, so 3.2% of GDP, was lower under 
uh, Aquino, Ramos, uh, Estrada hitting an all-time low with uh, GMA, then a pickup, a significant pickup to 2.9% under Noi Noi. Uh, but here, look at this chart here. This is the projected, this is a, for those of you who can't see the video, who, who are listening on audio only, this is a line chart here showing the expected public spending on infrastructure uh, under the current administration. So we have here, I mean, 2015 is at 4.3%, which is pretty high, but the goal is to eventually climb to 7.3% by 2022. So that is uh, that is quite a bit. So the, the, it looks like the current administration is really serious about fixing infrastructure here. So whatever you think of uh, the Duterte administration's politics, uh, in terms of economics, is I mean, at, the, at face value, this, this looks good. Uh, how will the Duterte administration finance this broad infrastructure plan? By the way, we were just called a build, build, build. It's pretty obvious what that means, right? The, the name build, build, build. You don't, I don't have to spell it out for you what the emphasis is on. So how are they doing that? How are they financing this? Uh, maybe some of you have heard of the recently passed uh, train. Um, act. It's a tax, train stands for tax reform for acceleration and inclusion. So basically additional, well there's a cut on personal income tax basically, but also additional taxes on things like fuel and motor vehicles. So, and there is a horn in the background. Um, someone's beeping outside, but well, nothing, not much we can do about that. But I will continue talking and hopefully the horn won't uh, disrupt me too much. Okay, 70% of revenue from this from train is earmarked to go to infrastructure development. So again, this is from uh, train again is a it's balancing it's basically balancing personal income tax cuts with increased taxes on on items like um, like gas and vehicles. So that's the idea is to to efficiently get get more taxes to fund infrastructure. Um, that's one again. Uh, train is going is is estimated to account for about twenty five percent of build build build. So again, those are estimates, but it's worth taking into consideration. Um, okay. Another form of funding. Um, is actually coming from government from foreign government funding. So. Uh, the Duterte administration is looking to cut deals with foreign governments, particularly Japan and China. So this is actually in um, in uh, this is the difference from the previous uh, uh, Aquino administration, where the emphasis was more on uh, public and private uh, partnerships, basically partnerships between the government and private corporations. So it's more of a government to government um, way of funding this time around. Uh, hopefully, it works. Um, um, certainly, you can search the internet for arguments for and against this, um, but that's currently what the administration is looking to do to help fund, to help fund build, build, build. Uh, for build, 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 there are about 75 keystone projects, the majority of which is in Metro Manila. Um, based on my research, the two, two of the biggest, uh, most noticeable projects in Metro Manila under build, 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 is a C6 and the Mega Manila subway. So I just want to show you this post from Esquire. This is a proposed, I believe, this is a proposed, um, well, no, this is not the actual proposed plan for those of you who are watching. But for those of you who are just listening, this is a plan that uh, a forum user just created to show like what it, what, what a, a subway station might look like so this isn't official but it's it's worth considering and uh, I've seen this picture make the rounds on social media so it just looks so neat like all the little colored lines and everything like that anyway that's just to put uh, uh, an imagination to what these proposed or what these planned initiatives for building the subway are okay so again improving our infrastructure so that the, the net effect being uh, an increased standard of living across all of society in, in Manila and the Philippines. So 
What are the risks? Well, aside from the obvious implementation risks, you have, I, I suppose, corruption falls under this. Um, some critics of uh, build, 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 and its way of funding by, uh, with, with train, for example, is a, is a higher than expected inflation. Um, I do not want to get too much into the details of the economic details of inflation here, but suffice it to say is that um, if prices of goods that are being sold are become more expensive, or they're they're going, or the the, the public knows that they're going to be more expensive because of these increase in taxes, um, people are going to. The idea is that people are going to start buying more commodities, hence bringing up the price. And the price of commodities will be higher relative to the Philippine peso. So that's inflation, basically, because uh, overall the, Philipp the Philippine peso becomes weaker. Its purchasing, its purchasing power is weaker. Uh, the idea here is that with a weaker peso, uh, you don't know how things may turn out. The peso might fall steeply, uh, hence leading to a bunch of things in the economy, like the government increasing interest rates to stabilize the economy. And, other things, which I don't want to talk about too much in detail in this episode, maybe in another episode, uh, and it might lead to a weaker economy. That's one major criticism. Uh, and it, it is, and there has been um, some data for that has shown that inflation in the Philippines has been moving up recently. Although that's before that's been before um, major implementation of of trains. So again, we're going to see what happens with that. Um, so inflation is something to watch out for. Other critics uh, against um, the um, build, 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 and train in particular is that some believe that train is anti-poor. Basically, that the idea is that uh, they, the poor don't really earn a huge income, so the, maybe the income tax rate might not affect them. Also, the excise taxes, basically, basically the taxes on goods like fuel and uh, vehicles might affect them. Uh, I will say that I think there's a good um, article addressing that issue. I'm just going to click over here and look for it on my trusty web browser. Let's see. Okay. Well, I can't look at it now. Hold on. Well, basically, there's an there's an article here uh, called Assessing... Um, Well, anyways, there's an article I will link to it in the description about about how train is basically it's basically a set of compromises, and even though um, taxes on fuel, for example, uh, will be higher, uh, one economist. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm pulling it up now. Uh, one one um, writer was saying that basically. Um, hmm. Fuel tax. Uh, it's con it's fuel is mainly consumed, according to him. Fuel is mainly consumed by the well-off. So this article in Business World called "Assessing Train," he's basically saying that there are there even if there's a tax on fuel, it's not really affected by uh, affecting the poor because they don't really consume that much fuel. Uh, all things considered. Uh, obviously, it's it's not a perfect. Uh, according to this op-ed, it's not a perfect. Um, bill uh, trade is not a perfect bill, but it's our our tax initiative. But uh, again, um, politics are are intertwined with economics. So you it's there are basically political compromises. So there are compromises on all different parts of society that are sort of included in this in trade. So it's not perfect. Uh, there are a lot of trade offs, but that's the way it is. So um, uh, generally speaking. Uh, I don't want to be too carried away with ideology, and if there's a compromise, if compromises have to be made, that's fine, as long as we're getting we're getting something done and moving forward. I, I think that's the most important thing. Okay, so those are the two uh, major criticisms: uh, whether train, uh, wh how how fair train is, and also uh, inflation. Okay, so what's the current situation of uh, build build build? Uh, uh, earlier in, in January of this year, the C6 was uh, broken. Had a, had, sorry, the ground was broken for C6, which is a, 
uh, an expressway to connect the gig with Quezon City. So that's 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 a good start. Uh, the for the Mega Manila subway deal, actually, uh, the the Philippine government, uh, the first tranche of a loan that is taken from Japan has been signed in March, and the plan is to, is to start it so that by 2020, partial operations will begin. Yeah, keep in mind we're in 2018, so that, that's in two years. So that's a uh, I feel like those are very ambitious goals, but we'll see where the government goes with this. So hopefully things get done. Okay, so uh, that's basically it in a nutshell for uh, the initiatives to currently to fix uh, infrastructure in Manila and uh, to a certain extent the Philippines as well. Uh, mm, I would just want to emphasize that uh, what I, the the message I want to continue broadcast with uh, First of Manila is that we can, we can all we all have our own politics and our own our own thoughts of how things should be done. But we have to if we're gonna if we're gonna move to the next stage of growth, which is inclusive economic growth and a raise and a higher standard of living for everybody, we as a society have to agree on a few uh, few key things, particularly in the economic and urban development side of things. So. Uh, hope I, I like for everyone to support the current administration in these overall broad policies, and hopefully that, hopefully even after the end of and the end of the current administration, whoever continues, at least the policies will more or less continue as well, instead of being stuck and nothing gets done. So that's again what I want uh, to for everyone to take away from this. Okay, and before I uh, stop, uh, today's uh, Spanish and Tagalog word of the day is yo, yo. Ako, yo in Espanol, ako in Tagalog, yo, ako, me. So hopefully uh, I added a little bit of culture to this uh, podcast and yeah, that's it. Okay, uh, that's it for today's episode. Uh, I will see you guys soon. Have a good day or good evening.